Did you know, for example, 51% of people say they'll take their next holiday alone? My girlfriend will. She doesn't know yet, but she will. <laughs> One in six British grandparents plan to spend all their savings before they die. So, kill them now. <laughs> 90% of people are happy in their own company. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panelist's job to guess the British public's top three most popular talking points. Ashley, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? What, what do I think people have been talking about this week? <laughs> <laughs> At a guess, I think it might well be that Donald Trump became uh, the 45th... Was it the 45th? The 45th. 45th, 45th yeah. president. <clears throat> the final. The final president. <laughs> but, Kathy, you've met um, Clinton. Bill. You Clinton. met Bill Clinton. Yeah. Well, how was um, Bill? Well, I was, at, I was at a dinner. I kind of gate crashed a dinner. It was a 100th anniversary of Labour dinner and there were lots of business people there and I thought some of them might be good to interview. So I was on a table with all these business people and we each had a box of peppermints. And one of the guys said, I dare you to go and get Bill Clinton to sign your peppermint box. So I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, fine. <laughs> That's a bit of a risk of Bill, isn't it? Yeah. Well... <laughs> for signing <laughs> peppermint box. <laughs> <laughs> So I went over, there he was, he was surrounded by men and obviously seeing me at the back, he reached over, oh, winked God. at me, pulled me towards him and signed my peppermints. Oh. Now I half expected him to say, will you suck it and see? Travel <laughs> 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 for news, everyone, travel for news. <laughs> I'm going to watch more news if that's the kind of stuff you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether the presidential election is up there. <laughs> yes, Donald topic. Trump is the new president. I must say, as apprentice tasks go, Trump's really nailed this one. Hillary's currently sitting in a cafe, crying into a cup of tea, trying to work out who she's going to bring back into the boardroom. <laughs> 7% of drivers have gone to court over a speeding incident. It happened to me. I tried to explain, yes, I was speeding at one point, but to be fair, hitting those pensioners slowed me right down. 5% <laughs> of people have worn the same pair of jeans for the last 10 years, and we call those people dads. <laughs> and 43% of British women don't get enough sleep. Well, ladies, trust me, if you go to bed with me, you will. <laughs> right, let's get started. Rob Steen, what have the nation been talking about over the last week? Trump, again, <laughs> you think? I think this is a glimpse into the next four years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, depressingly. Apparently he's calming down a bit. It's, it's not as bad. I think that's a general vibe. He's stopped the ban on Muslim things, not going to happen. And the wall's a little bit, you know, <coughs> more fancy. <laughs> 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 and, uh, but then you sort of go, oh, right, he's calmed down then. What, well, what has he done? Oh, just appointed a white supremacist as his right hand man. <laughs> Oh, good, thank God. I thought he was going to do something racist. <laughs> <laughs> I think the whole thing about the fence is going to be really funny, you know, because, uh, you know, it was a wall at some point, and we already have some walls. You know, <laughs> then it's going to be a fence in some parts, then it's going to be uh, barbed wire at some parts, <laughs> a, a dog at other parts, and just like a <laughs> keep off the grass sign at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of think, though, like, we, he's, he's, he's saying he wants to keep Obamacare and still do the wall, but it's going to be expensive. Why doesn't he just build one really long hospital? Just put that on the boulder. You know he'd build it on the wrong side, though. Yeah. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> no. I can't believe I was getting away with saying these things. Like, it's just insane, some of the things that he says and what he says he's going to do. The thing is, he's, he's like in his 70s. Like, my dad's in his 70s. I'd never let him run a country unless... No. <laughs> unless my mum was with him all the time. <laughs> She'd say, oh, come on, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just uh, talk to them, stop eating cakes and crack on with the job. <laughs> it, it does feel like every time, when you look at what 2016 has given us, it's Donald Trump got elected, it feels like the world's at war, the refugee crisis is escalating, Mary Berry's off Bake Off, Fred, <laughs> they changed the size of Toblerone's Fred. It feels like 2016, what have you got left for us? We've one month left. Will Postman Pat come out as a paedophile? <laughs> Things his cat would have seen. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. What 
watching the news at the moment, like I finally understand watching football because night after night I feel like I'm watching like this going, oh, come on, get off, get off the news. <laughs> What, Sarah, what do you what do you make of uh, Donald Trump? What well, are your... um, I find that the right in America seem to be so contradictory. So on one hand, they're like very pro-life, and so that's very um, tricky in terms of mm -hmm. women's reproductive rights. And then on the other side, they're talking about pro-gun laws and supporting that. And I feel like if we just called maybe fatal shootings very late-term abortions, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so like, like, how can it be that like you are allowed to kill an intruder in your house but not evacuate one from your womb? Pick <laughs> <laughs> <Get> a team. <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> We were the tenth call he made was to Theresa May, and everyone's questioning that. And if we want his attention, we need a pussy he wants to grab. And I think we should pretend that Kelly Brook is Prime Minister. <laughs> not, just to entice him, not, not let him near her. I'll For kick his head in if he touches her. But just to like, get him interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you saying that instead of phoning number ten, it should be some sort of chat line first? <laughs> <laughs> just to kind of, oh, hi. Yeah. Imagine though being Theresa May and being like, her age and getting to the top of her game and she's still ladies waiting for some jackass to call <laughs> just call 10 other people and eventually at the end of the night around 4 a.m she gets this text from donald trump going bay you still up and she's like oh, uh, why can't i get myself in this situation <laughs> she definitely texted back who dis like she did <laughs> Why was that a snub, though? She was the 10th. Do you know how hard it is to be a 10 in Donald Trump's book? <laughs> like, you have to be 50 years younger than she is already. Well, let's have a look and see if Donald Trump's one of the most talked about things. Of course. <laughs> yes, it's Donald Trump, President-elect. Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson said there was a lot to be positive about following Trump's victory. Yeah, especially if you're a big fan of sexual assault and racism. <laughs> Pigs can run at a speed of 11 miles per hour. Unfortunately for pigs, what can run at 12 miles per hour is David Cameron. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> Tonight, it's the panellist's job to guess the British public's top three most talked about Brits of the last year. Rob. <sighs> Jeremy Corbyn. It's got to be up there. He keeps getting re-voted in, doesn't he? I just don't think I'd trust him with a barbecue. <laughs> 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 he's always been a little bit kind of, I don't know, he seems a bit nerdy. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> what is he in charge of? He's uh, nothing, literally fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's the, what, what's happened is he's the leader of the opposition party, the Labour Party, and then all the MPs, all the people in the party with him, tried to get rid of him, <laughs> but the voters went, no, no, we like him. So they've got a leader that they all hate. Oh, it's a, a leader like... you hate? Yeah. <laughs> with this Labour leadership thing, because to vote on it, you've got to pay 25 quid. People don't even vote in the general election and it's free. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to pay 25 quid to elect the person that's going to lose to the Tories? Same people that voted for Honey G. He is my soul. He came backstage to a gig once. He, I'm in the same borough as him and he in London. Did he come to a gig? He came to a, gig, a comedy gig and everyone was able to rip the piss out of him and he took it on the chin and like <laughs> high-fived everyone. You've met him, you like him. How would you improve his image? See, I like that he sticks to his guns. I like, yeah, like maybe a shave and a wash, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but then that's a real lefty. You know, you want your left to be kind of a socialist looking with a peak cap. You don't want them to look like the Tories. You Absolutely. want them to be, you want them to look like the opposition. You want them at some stage to get into government, don't you? Yeah, but then would that kind of ruin their vibe, you know? Well, take, take a look at him back in his younger years. Take a look at this. It's not a fashion parade. It's not a gentleman's club. It's not a banker's institute. It's a place where the people are represented. Is uh, that the jumper that your mum made? Yes, it is. <laughs> she didn't make the shirt as well, as No, no, she didn't make the shirt. That came from the co-op. But the, the jumper she knitted, and it's very comfortable, and it's perfect for this kind of weather, because I'm hopping in and out of buildings all day long, going to meetings and different places, and it's just, just perfect for the winter weather. <laughs> I mean... Sort of musty look about him, hasn't he? He looked like an expert in a disaster film no one believes until it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of reminds me like your version of Bernie Sanders, you know? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Like, but both of them remind me of like someone that only eats soup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like he's like, he's like, where's my soup? 
<laughs> people want him to be this like crazy guy, but he's he's never going to be like posting pictures on Instagram of him eating salad and having a laugh, like <laughs> <laughs> or a cock shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you, you know he has to have a, a big hairy mess down there, right? <laughs> Maybe that's why he's so musty. <laughs> Sam, what do you make of uh, Jeremy Corbyn? I like it. It's like a dodgy geography teacher look. <laughs> this is I you imagine it wouldn't this. be a mess down there. <laughs> I'm just saying, the look you're rocking is, you know, a PE teacher. What says sport about that? <laughs> it says 70 sport. Like, you're talking sex sport? What are you talking about here? Like, I don't... Sport sport. Not dodgy kind of like... No, no dodgy things. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> see you in that way. No. I think I know where you're going with it, and I think it's... I would like to finally just get this out in the open. I would like to see a moustache to pedophile ratio. <laughs> that you're getting to that eventually, like he's got a dodgy look, like he's hanging around toilet blocks or something. Damn, I don't think Jim was alluding you look like yeah. a paedophile. I think it's a, you look like all the people on Guess Who. <laughs> 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 gave up and the front of your face kept going. <laughs> you, don't have to take, you don't have to stand for that. You're a beautiful it's just, it's man. It's slowly migrating down my back and it's a look I'm... My wife seems to love it. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you remember I can see if Jeremy Corbyn's one of the most ordered by people of 2016? <laughs> Number three. Yes, it's Jeremy Corbyn. In June, a motion of no confidence against Jeremy Corbyn was passed, but Corbyn wasn't worried. At his age, you get used to unwanted motions being passed all the time. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 17% of adults don't class sexting as cheating? I love sexting. Nothing turns me on more than reading the phrase, who dis? 47% <laughs> of people think boy racers are the worst type of drivers, and that's a survey of people who have never seen your mum park in a disabled bay and then do one of her funny walks into Sainsbury's. <laughs> and 80% of people say they always visit cultural attractions when on holiday, although that drops to just 20% when you explain that watching someone shoot ping-pong balls out of their foof is not technically <laughs> a cultural attraction. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> Ashling, yes. what do you think the nation will be talking about? Uh, without a doubt, it must be uh, the potential United States of Trump. Uh, America is basically about <laughs> to play the biggest game of would you rather that the world has ever seen. <laughs> and the question is, as a president, would you rather a woman uh, loses a few emails, wears a lot of pantsuits, <laughs> or a racist sex pest? <laughs> and, um, it turns out America really hates pantsuits. <laughs> Should we take a look and see if uh, the American election is up there? Uh, yes, the most talked about thing. Yes, it's the US presidential election. Trump or Clinton? It's the political equivalent of being asked, would you prefer to f your mum or give your dad a blowing? <laughs> <laughs> Rob's team, what do you um, think the nation will be talking about? Uh, what do I think? Um, what are you going for? What's been happening? Brexit. Yes. Brexit's big oh, again, God, isn't it? Is yeah. it the new Brexit ruling? The, the new Brexit ruling. Well, explain. The thing is, the issue is, it's basically not really should we go or not. It's basically Theresa May looks stupid now because she said she's going to trigger Article 50. And she can't. But she can't until all the MPs vote to do it. So that's the new problem, isn't it? It's so bloody confusing, though. It does feel like Britain has turned into an episode of Game of Thrones. You know, in Game of Thrones, are always winter's coming, winter's coming, and winter never comes. Like I feel like every time I watch Channel Four news, like Brexit's coming, Brexit's coming. You know nothing, Jon Snow. We don't know what's coming. <laughs> I used to have a friend at school who yeah. used, to, they used to hold a pee in. Mm -hmm. And what he used to do is he used to hold the pee in, but he used to hold oh, yeah, the yeah. end of his foreskin so it'd swell up like a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worrying thing is, the people JB went to school with are probably trying to sort out the <laughs> Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> Just going, what, Article 50, watch this first. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, it's a tough job. How would you know? <laughs> How would you even know what a job is? <laughs> Welcome 
Welcome to 8 out of 10 counts, a show about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, 15% of people say carbon monoxide detectors are too expensive? Yeah, I love my kids, but not 12 quid's worth. <laughs> One in three horses in the UK are lame. So you might think horses are cool, but actually a third of them, pretty lame. <laughs> 40% of people in Middlesbrough say they wouldn't buy a property without a front garden, of course, because they need somewhere to keep their fridge. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> Ashling's team, what do you think the nation have been talking about this week? Uh, Article 50, ah, uh, my head is sore. <laughs> I think basically... The MPs voted in favour of triggering Article 50, but that's just an advisory vote, not legally binding. So was the referendum that wasn't legally binding. So now it's gone to the Supreme Court and they're going to debate it out and vote on whether that vote should go ahead or not. And if they don't vote in favour of the vote, then there has to be another vote on that vote. So I'm just really glad after the vote on Brexit, oh, we're way out of the complications of the EU because everything's so much simpler now. <laughs> They're answering, basically, the Supreme Court are answering a question that's been huge the last year. Can Brexit get any more boring? And it turns out... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it can. Is yeah. it going to be a hard or a soft Brexit, was one of the questions. Also, the red, white and blue Brexit, it's just getting ridiculous. It's like Theresa's had word vomit. <laughs> I've got the clip of Theresa May. I mean, good luck. Good luck with this. People talk about the sort of Brexit that there is going to be. Is it hard, soft? Is it grey, white? Actually, we want a red, white and blue Brexit. That is the right Brexit for the United Kingdom. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, no, fine. We want a Brexit that looks a bit like bunting, huh? <laughs> This Supreme Court thing, I can't believe how quick it's been. They're saying they're going to have a decision in four days. Like, I faked whiplash in 2010. I've only just got paid. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Kamara, I made a whole Brexit thing. <laughs> what? Go ahead. I, know well, I got... don't know anything about politics. I have to be honest. Don't you? Oh, 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 <laughs> I've seen you on Sky. You don't know a lot about football either. <laughs> OK, let's see if Brexit's up there. <laughs> yes, it's Brexit. The case for Brexit's been presented to the Supreme Court. If it gets through, the next stage is judges' houses. <laughs> then if the judges can't decide, Dermot O'Leary takes it to deadlock. <laughs> Best way to make a good first impression. Stay flaccid. <laughs> You live and learn, Jim, and <laughs> when I meet someone fully flaccid, I swear by it. It's a little bit of a compliment if I was to, if I was to meet someone and they got a straightaway boner. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we've found the best way to deal with If anyone ever gets flashed, it's a horrible thing if you get flashed in the park or anything, it's kind of mm -hmm. gross. But I think that, that uh, yeah. I thank you. <laughs> OK, what, how do you make a good first impression? Um... <laughs> I don't know, Jim. <laughs> so let's say, let's say when you were, you know, your footballing career, when you turn up in Stoke as a player, you arrive at a new club. I turned up at Stoke on crutches. I just recently had a cartilage operation. So you turned up on crutches, limped towards the door, and uh, and, and signed. And signed, yeah. yeah. I mean, that is a maverick, yeah. isn't it? Signing <laughs> someone and going, well, he can't walk, yeah. but I reckon. <laughs> I reckon if you put him near the goal, he'd be all right. That, 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 that was the best they saw of me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, best way to make good compliment, first impression. Compliment, Jimmy, compliment. Number eight, that's number eight on our list. Smiling. It's exactly smiling. right, smiling. Oh. Oh. Ah. Right. Of course you got that. Look at him. Smiling. He can make a good first impression from 400 <laughs> yards. <laughs> Yes, the best way to make a good first impression <laughs> is smiling. You can't tell much about me from my smile, but what you can tell is my dentist has just bought a speedboat. 15% <laughs> of Britain's native species are at risk of extinction. I love seeing our wonderful animals, foxes, badgers and hedgehogs in their natural habitat, jumping up and down on a trampoline in someone's back garden. 77% <laughs> of men get down on one knee when they propose. It's a meaningless tradition, but some people still like marriage. <laughs> 
And 85% of women wash their hands after going to the toilet. Why are you washing your hands, ladies? Surely what you should be washing is your bum and your fanny. <laughs> to that joke is your bum and your fanny. <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> what do you think people have been talking about over the last year? Do you even want to say the words? No, I, I just even... want to hear Jimmy say bum and fanny again. <laughs> <laughs> your bum and your fanny. <laughs> it's sinister, though, the way you say it. <laughs> your bum and your fanny. <laughs> You're saying I'm sinister. You're wearing a necklace featuring a unicorn fucking a panda. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's a good, it's a good necklace, isn't it? I'm mixed race, and even I think that's unnatural. <laughs> 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 Offensive. No, I love is it. Is it offensive to the animal community? Kate, you would know. Oh. Yeah, I'd, I think, you know, at least the pandas pick something that's persistently horny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, Kate, you're, you're an yeah. expert on animals. The, the unicorn is endangered, right? <laughs> so is, is this the most talked about subject of the year? <laughs> <laughs> the Definitely. unicorn's endangered. <laughs> I'm going to bring a bit of decorum to proceedings, and mm. I think what most British people have been talking about this year, excuse me, is Brexit! <laughs> Yay! I don't know. I mean, it, Brexit happened this year. Uh, the United Kingdom uh, decided to leave. I think the genius was the Leave campaign, which uh, decided not to use things like, I don't know, facts or whatever. <laughs> and instead, it appealed to people's emotions. And I use the word appeal because it was mostly about bananas. What they did was, and this is the genius, they were like, guys, they're trying to control our bananas. And people were like, no way! <laughs> not that staple of the British diet, the humble British banana, not my watch! <laughs> Rick, what do you make of the, uh, the campaign? Yeah, I mostly enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> the thing that, uh, sure, you enjoyed it, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was interested when we started talking about the type of Brexit and they started to hear a chat about hard Brexit. Ooh. Which then made me think. <laughs> I like the idea, if we'd voted to stay, of everyone kind of going, now, it's going to be hard remain. <laughs> so we take the Euro, <laughs> we have millions more immigrants. <laughs> John Claude Juncker is like Prime Minister. Apparently we need a, a £122 billion pound loan. Uh, where'd you get a loan that big? Wonka? Well, <laughs> I'm not sure, but it may be if you paid your tax, we'll have half. <laughs> and see whether Brexit's up there. <laughs> yes, Britain voted for Brexit. Brexit will have a lot of repercussions. If all the Eastern European workers go home, just imagine the mountain of ironing, the backlog of DIY jobs, and Keith Vaz might have to fuck his wife for a change. <laughs> <laughs> that lovely story, Keith Vaz? Yeah. All right, Keith? <laughs> I'm already repugnant, am I? <laughs> 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 Have a fucking word, mate. Have a word. <laughs> Did it say that you're morally repugnant? Everyone said I was morally repugnant. Because <laughs> oh. I was. They were just stating the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know, for example, 26% of new mums worry about their social life changing. So you lose the chance to hang out with the girls, drink Prosecco and have a good old gossip. But on the other hand, you've got sick down your top, your house stinks of baby shit and your boobs ache. So, swings and roundabouts. <laughs> 10,000 birds die each year crashing in windows. Hey, birds, get with it. Maybe it's time you got a Mac. That is a silly joke. <laughs> and 17% of women want a partner who likes their cooking better than their mum's. I'll admit my girlfriend's cooking is much better than my mum's, but when it comes to blowjobs... <laughs> right, let's get started. <laughs> Best way to put the spark back into a relationship. What do you think? Right. Uh, Role play? Oh. She rolls over and I play with myself. <laughs> Alex, what, what, what do you think? What's the best way to put the spark back into a relationship? I think there are two options. OK. Mm -hmm. Alcohol. Perfect. <laughs> Easy. Or a life and death situation. Sometimes you can combine the two. 
Like you're doing enough Jaeger bombs in one night. Whoa. Or if you're having a picnic on a very high cliff. <laughs> Hold on, back in love. <laughs> what do you think, Ashling? If you if you had to put the spark back into a relationship? Why bother with sparks? Why not go fire? Set yourself on fire, then he'll notice me. <laughs> Um, Craig, I'd say have an affair. <gasps> you know, the breakup sex is brilliant. Mm. And then coming back to one another is brilliant. You really are the voice of Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> have an affair, everyone. Well, they've all taken that advice, the haven't they? <laughs> See, I would never do Strictly. If I wanted to cheat on my husband, I would just do it and skip all the dance rehearsals. <laughs> It's such a convenient excuse, isn't it? Like, oh, I was cursed. I didn't know what I was doing. I, I walked under a ladder and fell onto his cock. I didn't know what had happened. Have you, have you had relationships that needed a little bit of a spark? And what did you do? Absolutely. My boyfriend's so cute, but it's kind of nerdy. He, like, uh, wears a mouth guard every night to bed, and he sweats a lot. So I just, like, imagine he's a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> He has like little night terrors. I'm like, fight him, baby. <laughs> oh, so cute. I tell you what doesn't put a spark back into a relationship. If you've got kids, is when um, the baby's crying and you go, oh, have you tried giving it some milk? Don't tell me this. And she goes, oh yeah, I'm just sitting here with a baby. I'm not fucking feeding for three hours. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't think to give it milk, did I? <laughs> I'm just sitting here looking at him at me. Your missus sounds charming. <laughs> Oi, oi! <laughs> Rob's home! <Yeah. laughs> Did you meet your wife in prison? <laughs> Sitting here with a baby, not feeding it. <laughs> oi, oi! <laughs> These little bugs had nothing three days. <laughs> <laughs> OK, best way to put a spark back in a relationship. Well, what do you think? Toys sex toys. or...? Sex, sex mm. toys. Um, <laughs> number ten is swinging. Oh. Uh, no. but... oh just going to the park's nice, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Date, uh, nice. date, date night's number two. It's, it's, it's more than a date a night. A weekend away. Yeah, That's the right answer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, the best way to put a spa back into a relationship is a weekend away. I tried to be romantic by taking my girlfriend to a spa, but apparently she wasn't impressed and it's not even a decent supermarket. <laughs> the UK is the fifth fattest nation in Europe, so who's fatter than us? Well, I believe it's Fatvia, Lardinia, <laughs> Slovenia and the Porkney Islands. <laughs> a recent study revealed Taiwan is the best country in the world for expats. My auntie is now an expat. He calls himself Chris. Never been happier. <laughs> right, let's get started. I think people have been talking about sports wise. Maybe the Paralympics, Jimmy? Well, there's a Paralympics and then there's the boring Olympics. <laughs> That's why they put the Paralympics on second, because you couldn't put the Paralympics on first and then watch the other boring Olympics. Because you'd be like, oh my God, Tom Daly's going to dive. Wait, he's got two arms. <laughs> boring! <laughs> I mean, how hard would it be for you to go for another cycle, another Paralympic cycle? Well, I want... I think stick to swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Take an interest. Yeah. Yeah, plan is, my plan is to go to um, another Paralympics, and then I'm going to join the Bokia team. Bokia? So Bokia is when there's a white ball, and they're normally in teams. Right. And they just try and, like, get the ball to that white ball as close as they can. The next Paralympics you'll go, and then you'll join another team and try and do another Olympics. Yeah, probably. That's my aim. Uh, Gabby, you watch the Paralympics, I presume? Oh, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't out there. I've been out there for the Olympics, but I wasn't out there for the Paralympics. So I watched it at home and enjoyed it as a, as a viewer, and uh, they just did magnificent. The whole team was incredible, because London was such a success. I don't think yeah. anybody thought they could achieve, you know, that and then go some, you know, and double their tally of gold. I, I love the Paralympics because it's kind of... It's inspiring. It's bought your house, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, mate. Wait till Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because, it, you know, we're, we're successful. But it's like once every four years I get to go into a room and I'm not like the weirdest looking one in there. It's <laughs> 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 not on it. You say, like, you know, sometimes like, if you saw like someone with like a prosthetic leg and you was walking, oh, you might hold, wait to hold the door open where yeah. occasionally you might have been, if you're both able bodied, it's sort of like a 50 50 who's going to open the door. But I don't know, like, is there sort of different levels at the Paralympics? Of, there's, like... there's, a, there's a hierarchy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the blind ones, no one gives a fuck about. <laughs> 
that's all two blind blokes at a train station bump into each other. And one said sorry, and I went, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they worked out who was wrong. <laughs> you should see at the village, it's like, for especially blind people, you see a visually impaired person, like, all just, like, holding each other, like, guiding each other. Who's at the front? A visually impaired person. Oh. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's, like, are they still like there? <laughs> Which is brilliant, isn't it? It's like someone's got one of us wet and we've multiplied. Look, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many disabled people. I bet the parking spaces are rammed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we would have had a really busy day. The geezer at the train station does the ramp on the train. Oh, yeah. You get all the spectators coming, you know, when your train pulls in and the yeah. has to get the ramp out. Like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> 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 two hours in my shift. <laughs> when we went on the plane out there, we were on the plane with some of the Paralympians. And you know, because they have that, like, that little aisle wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. So there's only one to get them through. So there's all, they're all dumping their wheelchairs at the start. And the bloke goes in, it just looks and goes, Oh, you're fucking kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cue. We're all back into the terminal. <laughs> OK, let's, uh, let's have a look and see if the Paralympics is up there. Oh. Yes, it's the Paralympics. <laughs> Ticket sales for the Paralympics were disappointing, but when I first heard there were a lot of empty chairs in the stadium, I thought there's been a miracle. <laughs> Did you know, for example, 77% of men get down on one knee when they propose? It's a meaningless tradition, but some people still like marriage. <laughs> One in three horses in the UK are lame. So you might think horses are cool, but actually a third of them, pretty lame. <laughs> and 17% of adults don't class sexting as cheating. I love sexting. Nothing turns me on more than reading the phrase, who dis? <laughs> right, let's get started. What do you think the nation should be talking about? Um, yeah, I'm a celebrity get me out of here jungle shows back now, isn't it? No, you used to work out there. You used to do the what was the show on after I'm Yeah, so I used to do the spin-off show <clears throat> and we talk about us in the jungle, but I did that for three years. I miss it. So I really miss it. Sometimes I just go to Rainforest Cafe for a sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, did you remember when I was there? Yeah, I was there when you yes, were there. Respect, what are you saying? Yeah. yeah, what I liked about when you were there, this got Joey's got I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna have a go at your teeth because I can't really, you know. <laughs> but when you was on it, when you used to brush your teeth, and I don't know if you still do this, this made me laugh so much. He doesn't move the toothbrush, you just shake your head. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rude. <laughs> right, I still do it. Is that so how do you brush your teeth? Can like, you just... Every single day, you're like that. <laughs> yeah, but Joey, when you brush your head, you just keep the comb still and just move your head. <laughs> no. I'm almost afraid to ask this, but how do you wipe your arms? <laughs> <laughs> Completely normal. <laughs> yeah, that is really... You know, crocodile <laughs> vaginas on the menu this time. Cro crocodile Which... vagina. Cro they've got crocodile vagina Apparently. in again. With Katie Opkins going back in. <laughs> <laughs> It's an insult to crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, what's weird is they always do something, it's always something random, like a camel's toe or a crocodile vagina or something off a kangaroo. I feel like there must be like sort of like some sort of port centre for all these animals. Yeah, what happens about, to oh, them? This is a crocodile, they ain't my vagina. <laughs> I lost my toe. <laughs> and that kangaroo crying in the corner going, Christopher Biggins ain't my arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first person to say that, I shouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a fan of the show? I like the... I saw the one where... What's her name? Gillian... Is it Gillian McKeefe? Is that how you say her name? G Gillian McKeefe. Yeah, Gillian, you say whatever. Um, <laughs> and she fainted mm. because she didn't want to do a challenge. I've once done that. In an old job, <clears> I was really <throat> hungover and I went into a biscuit cupboard in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to go for a sleep. And my boss came in and found me and I went, Oh, I must have fainted. <laughs> and she went, Halfway for a Kit Kat. <laughs> <laughs> What did you think of uh, Scarlett Moffat as well? Because she ultimately won. I liked the fact that she looked so beautiful afterwards, like she had no makeup on and stuff. And it did remind me of the amount of the amount of effort we put in. You'll never actually know. You're curling your eyelashes, you're dyeing your skin, you're plumping yeah. up your boobs, you're pulling on your spanks, yes, we are. you're getting yeah. at the hair, you're doing the hair here, you're going downstairs, hacking away, trying to get rid of it so someone can get their head in there. You're doing all this stuff. <laughs> And you come downstairs and you go, well, how do I look? And he's like, well, you always look beautiful to me. And you're like, fuck you! 